Right, Benito owners with swing keels. Uh, welcome back. I've cleaned up the mechanism, the the screw mechanism, which uh, raises and lowers the the keel, uh, the centre board, I should say. Um, and um, I'm going to show you each part now. It's cleaned up. Quick explanation of uh, of what I've done. Right, firstly, this is the a composite part here, which we spoke about in an earlier video before I cleaned it up. This sits on the top of, or just underneath your table in the saloon, sits on top of um, the housing, and there are two holes in it here and here, and you use a stainless steel screw to screw that down onto the top. Um, the uh, cover, which surrounds the ball bearing race. You can see here the stainless steel ball bearings and they're in a cage. And then we've got two races and they're both stainless steel races. You've got to keep an eye on these. Make sure that they're in good condition. These are okay, but in a few years I might replace them. They're starting to feel a little bit lumpy. Um, in any case, one race sits there. Your ball bearings in a cage sits in that race. There's a top race or a bottom one actually, because we're looking at this upside down. This is the where you put your um, your winch handle. Um, so that's the top, and right down there's the bottom. Um, so there's your cover, plastic cover for your ball bearings, which will all get greased up, of course, with the correct grease, uh, marine grease. I'm going to use a white grease, but there's, uh, we'll talk about that another time if if you, if you somebody can send me a a, 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 a YouTube um, a message if you like, and we can discuss that. But uh, there's the composite plastic piece. Here's the uh, the steel shaft uh, with the screw, um, and then this is the brass nut, which I've cleaned up as well. You can see it's brass now. Um, that doesn't react with this steel, of course. That's why it's brass. This brass nut winds up and down this screw. Um, and that's what lifts lifts the keel. At the end, you've got uh, another composite piece here. A couple of washers and a stainless steel bolt in the end. And if you undo that, that's how you can get all these parts off this screw. Now, this then sits inside a steel tube, which I cleaned up, a stainless steel tube with a fork at the bottom. Now this tube, as you can see, it just slides up and down. This, this, the screw itself slides up and down. The screw doesn't screw into this stainless steel. It only slides up and down. It's this brass nut that screws into the top. Can you see the thread on the top of the stainless steel um, shaft? Well, this, nut here, the brass nut screws onto that thread and then when it's tight, when it's tight you then push this stainless steel barb into this locating notch here on the brass nut to stop it from turning and because that no longer turns what happens is that the thread, um, the screw I should say itself then travels up and down um, and um, because this no longer moves and it's fixed then to the uh, stainless steel shaft which holds the centre board. So this is what does all the work. This is where your load is. This screw and this brass nut. So this brass nut you screw onto, onto that thread and then you push, put this um, stainless steel barb down to correspond with that notch. Now... As you can see, I've cleaned it up. This is my old one, but it's all stainless steel, cleans up very well. Uh, there's the fork. Now, I've bought a new pair of these straps, stainless steel straps, and they only came with one anode, and I've put two of my own anodes on, measured them very carefully, and I've put one on each because I didn't think it was a good idea. There's the sizing, let's have a look. Um, I didn't think it was a very good idea just having one anode on one stainless steel strap. Um, so I've put one on each strap. Now, this comes in a pack with uh, a new stainless steel pin here, a new stainless steel 
split pin that goes through the, uh, the pin itself. Uh, and there's a spacer. And as you can see, these two straps sit inside this fork. And the spacer sits between the two um, straps, stainless steel straps. Now, right at the bottom, this is where your where your centerboard attaches itself to this whole mechanism. Um, you have another stainless steel pin. This goes through these straps. There isn't a spacer here because the spacer itself is your centerboard. And of course that weighs 0.8 or a ton. So this has got a lot of load on it. And, and finally, you, once you've pushed this pin through this, the uh, center board itself, uh, once it's in the lower position, you can then put the split pin in, secure that, and that's it done. Um, and then the whole thing will wind up the uh, center board. Uh, and uh, as you can see, so you've got a pivot point here and you've also got another pivot point there. So this effectively will do that as the center board comes up. As this mechanism winds up, that's, that screw winds inside there, then this will then slowly bend because the center board itself is not just solely, solely attached to this. There is a main pivot bolt uh, through the hull of your boat, through the keel, and that's where uh, that the, the, the carries the centerboard, and then this goes through the other the other hole um, to raise and lower it. So effectively, the centerboard does this. Um, it doesn't just go up and down; it actually swings as it comes up. So it 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 it, it swings like this. That's how the mechanism works. So there we are folks, um, that's it all cleaned up and that's ready for another few seasons. I'm going to give it plenty of grease and then that will be put back into uh, position on the boat um, where it belongs. And uh, it's worth taking these out every five years. Um, in fact, I'd, I'd probably do mine every two years uh, just to keep sure it's in tip top condition. Um, another thing I, I will mention this I've had made up by a stainless steel fabricator locally. Uh, this is marine grade stainless and it's made to the precise specifications of the original. I couldn't get the original because the supplier here, the dealer here in the UK, the Beneteau dealer, and I'm not going to mention any names, they let me down. They let me down by not listening to me and ordering the wrong part. And then um, the price then was ridiculous because of import duties and the fact that they then had to um, uh, import it at a, at a silly speed to get it to me. Uh, and I just said, just forget the whole thing because the price came to over £80. This thing I had knocked up for about 25 quid locally and it's the highest grade stainless. Um, and just to give you the dimensions of this, this is... Uh, As you can see there, it's 45, 45 millimeters in length. It's a, it's a M12 size pin, M12. So that's 12 millimeters here. There we are, 12 on the gauge. And this here, if you look, there is a, there's a flange at the top of it. So again, I've had that engineered specifically and the flange diameter is, as you can see there, is 18. Let's just get it in focus for you. There we are, 18 millimetres. So we've got an 18 millimetre flange, uh, 45 millimetres length and uh, uh, it's an M12. So a 12 millimetre diameter bolt or pin. And this flange itself, if I just measure that you can see that's four uh, no sorry it's three millimeters that's three millimeters so there's the specification for this and mine had bent because of the weight of the keel so I've replaced it um, so it, it carries a lot of load make sure you replace that make sure you you, you replace these and the anodes uh, and this stainless steel bolt here 
and the split pin. Um, and of course, up this end, you've got to keep an eye on these bearings inside here. So there we are, folks. That's how it works. I hope that's helped you out. And um, yeah, send me an email or a message on uh, YouTube if you, you have any questions. Cheerio.